Hospital. Stephanie Gosk on the rise in eating disorders. Isolated in a room because of COVID, with no school and unable to see friends, 16-year-old Chloe Melton's eating disorder went from bad to dangerous. I was in a controlled environment, which the eating disorder thrives in. I was um, able to make all of my meals. I would isolate my room. I was eating dinner at 2 o'clock. Why were you eating dinner at 2 o'clock? Intermittent fasting. The internet told me that that was healthier. The weight dropped fast, slowing her heart to under 40 beats per minute. Was it easy in those moments not to feel bad about the behavior because you didn't have anyone looking at it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, there were things I definitely knew I wasn't supposed to be doing that I did because I was by myself. Three months into the pandemic, Chloe was diagnosed with anorexia and ended up in an Atlanta hospital. At that same time, patients just like Chloe were also flooding Boston Children's Hospital. Typically, we would see three to four patients with eating disorders on our inpatient service. Post-pandemic, we were routinely over 10 and getting as many as 15 or 16. That's three, four, five times the number of patients that you normally see. Absolutely, and I would say it's not just the volume, but the complexity and the severity. Dr. Tracy Richmond is the director of the Eating Disorders Program at Boston Children's. I'd say a picture is worth a thousand words here. It's also heartbreaking. Absolutely. I mean, these are kids who should not be in, in a medical hospital setting. They should be at home and in school and thriving. Dr. Richmond reached out to eight other hospitals in the country and found a similar surge in severe eating disorder cases. Patient numbers doubling. We're seeing kids from all sorts of racial and ethnic backgrounds, all sorts of socioeconomic backgrounds. We are coming out of this pandemic. People are taking off masks. Kids are back in school. Is this going to get better? For you you know i really worry about this next wave to be honest i've had some patients who've told me they're really hesitant to go back we're going to see some ramifications for a long time in our adolescents mental health chloe says she struggles every day but she hopes her recovery might help someone else it's scary it never gets less scary until you keep doing it and it's so worth it stephanie you have to wonder is this is this her story about children's mental health right now Yes, Lester, experts say it really does. The doctor I spoke with at Boston Children's actually describes the mental health illnesses triggered by isolation and school closures as a second pandemic. Lester? All important information for parents. Stephanie, thank you. Up next, the amazing athletes inspired.